As it relates to fundraising. Okay, so you're fundraising in a COVID environment, which to me is a kind of a good thing because as an investor, it makes it pretty obvious. Like, is this entrepreneur great? COVID's a, the easiest litmus test. It's they're either surviving and killing it or they're dying. It's really straightforward. How do you even go about setting a valuation for a makeup, a skincare company? Is there, is it like three times revenue? Is it, do you know, is it an art and a science still? <laughs> it's an art and a science. And I've also heard we're right now I'm working with a business consultancy that works with CPG companies specifically. Okay. So they're helping us with this whole process, but from people in the industry, I've heard and, and sort of anywhere between three and seven X revenue, but that also depends on your size on all sorts of things. So yeah, um, I think it's, it's really squishy, especially for a company like ours with where we have not ever had a valuation event before we, you know, it's all cash flow. It's all so theoretical. I don't know. My business advisor has a better idea and I am putting sure. that trust into him. That's great. One thing I see all the time from CPG companies is they have this massive distribution deal, you know? And so this, this takes their valuation. It's just like, it, that's the difference between three to seven X. It's like, oh, Sephora has this order of a million things ready to rock. It's interesting because it sounds good, but having to produce that much for a retailer of that size is really a beast that most people, you have to really know what you're doing to, to start to engage in something like that. Are you willing to share, share with us how much you're raising? Yeah, we're raising a million dollars in convertible notes. Perfect. I like it. Have you started or not yet? No. Well, no, no. Just um, I just finished out. my deck last week. So just starting the it. process. But yeah, so we're just starting the process. And honestly, I mean, this could just be my hubris that's going to catch up to me very shortly. But I really do feel like I don't foresee a huge challenge in that raise because we do, I feel like the, our numbers just speak to how much untapped potential we have. Like we were putting together our deck and, and Sloan, my marketing director was pulling some numbers for it. And I was like, wait, what? This is crazy. Our acquisition, customer acquisition costs pay back 5X in the first 12 months since we get them. Like, so the, whatever amount it costs us to get a new customer, we get back five times in the first 12 months from that customer which is bonkers. And like, that's just kind of, you know, those numbers will come down as we scale, but it's still one of those things where like, if we have more capital to put into it, it's going to pay back pretty directly. Yeah. You have the equation. That's, that's really exciting. I remember, so we, I had a bow tie company and we were in the process of selling it and we were talking to a potential buyer and they said, so how much time do you guys spend on the phone taking orders? And we were like, what? We were like, no, zero. They're like, what about support calls? We're like, what support would a, someone need to, who's wearing, like they, their kid is strangled in the bow tie? Like what, we're like zero. They're yeah. like, you've never had a call. I'm like, so then it made me think like, are you guys, you know, experiencing heavy call volumes? And they said 90% of their customer, sure enough, orders via, like gets the magazine in the mail and then orders via the telephone. And that's when the valuation in my head just skyrocketed <laughs> because I was like, <laughs> your customer's dying and mine is a young buyer and you need, exactly. you need this segment of the market. I just always think about that story because it's, it's something that you, we take a lot of things for granted, right? When you're in the business yourself, you take your customer acquisition costs for granted, the word of mouth that you've worked so hard to build, you take it all for granted until you start to do the equation and really look at what are the levers for scaling. And then that's when things get really exciting. And I think to your point, I mean, I personally invested in a company that they had already done a million dollars in revenue on their own pre-raise. And I just thought it says a lot about a founder who can do that and achieve that and stick to that growth, which is not a, not a hockey stick. It's just sticking to little by little by little and a profit focused approach. But that entrepreneur is someone to, to bet on. At least I think it's someone to believe in because they, they sort of understand the fundamentals, which a lot of entrepreneurs today chase vanity metrics and stuff. And that's, you know, that's okay too. But generally speaking, the fundamentals will, will survive. They'll stand the test of time. Yeah. And uh, another thing I think, but both in terms of looking at the health of the company, but also in terms of sort of internal employee management and stuff is that metrics help to tell a story and unveil problems or, or good parts. They should never be the goal in and of themselves. You know, mm -hmm. if you 
used to have a 4X ROAS and now you have a 2X ROAS that says something that you can look into, you shouldn't be like, well, you know, we're getting a 4X ROAS no matter what, because there are ways to goose that metric that don't actually, maybe ROAS is not the right example because you are still getting that money back. But, you know, both in terms of like, I feel like any person who's worked in customer service or retail or anything has these of like, we need to sell X number of subscriptions or X number of credit cards or whatever. And that, that how many you're selling can be a good indicator of what's working and what's not. But if you try to sort of set a metric as a goal, you end up getting kind of cheap ways to get there that aren't necessarily great for the health of the company. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out that clip. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit the like button down below. And if you're interested in hearing the full episode, it's out right now on our YouTube channel. We've had a lot of great guests come on this show before, and we've got a lot of great guests coming up in the future. So hit subscribe so that you don't miss a single episode. And one final note, we're always looking for new ideas and new companies to feature on the show. So if you know of someone or know of a company, write us a comment down below letting us know who they are and what they do. We'd be happy to have them on the show. Till then, I'll just be here waiting for your comments. So, uh, see you later.